finally in this video we want to talk about how to solve absolute value equations. Now you may remember that when I take the absolute value of a number I get, uh, for an example, if I take the absolute value of negative 3 I get 3. When I take the absolute value of positive 3 I get 3 again. Now that's because the absolute value of a number is actually the distance away from the origin. So in other words, the absolute value of negative 3 is a distance of 3 units away from the origin. Just like the absolute value of positive 3 is again 3 units away from the origin. So when we take the absolute value of something, whether it's negative or positive, uh, whether it's negative or positive, we always end up with a positive value because distance is positive. Now how does that play into our equations? Well, if I have an equation where the variable is in the absolute value bars, then we would solve it by taking the variable, setting it equal to a positive c, and again we solve it a second time for a negative c. So that's how we're going to solve our absolute value equations. So let's look at this first example right here. We're going to try to solve the equation and uh, if we can. And if we can't, then we just have to say there's no solution. So here we have the absolute value of x plus 1 plus 6 equals to 2. The first thing that we want to do, like we've been doing in all of our other cases for solving these different types of equations, is isolating the variable component, which in this case is x plus 1. So if I want to get x plus 1 by itself, I'm going to subtract 6 to the right hand side. So I get x plus 1, still in between the absolute value bars, is equal to, when I subtract 6 to the other side, I get negative 4. So this statement right here says the absolute value of something is equal to a negative 4. But just a second, can I take the absolute value of a number and ever get a negative value? No. Didn't we just say that absolute value is a distance and distance will always be positive? So in this case, this is an example right here we can stop and say no solution and that's because the absolute value will never be a negative number. That was pretty easy for our first one. Let's try another one. Here's our second example. We have uh, 7 times the absolute value of 3x plus 2 equals 16. Again, we need to try to isolate the variable component. So I'm going to subtract 2 to the right hand side. I get 7 times the absolute value of 3x is equal to 14. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 7 because I'm still trying to get the absolute value portion by itself. So when I divide both sides by 7, I get the absolute value of 3x is equal to 2. This is now that we have it whittled down to absolute value equal a number, we separate it out into uh, the formula that we just looked at above. So this says that 3x can be equal to 2 or 3x can be equal to negative 2. And we solve each of these two equations. On the left hand side we divide both sides by 3 and find out that x can be equal to 2 thirds or x can be equal to negative two-thirds. And those are the two solutions that we have for this absolute value equation. So remember that when you are solving absolute value equations, you must get it down into its absolute value equal a positive number, and it's at that point that you split it up into positive and negative values so you can solve it.